All right. Good evening, everybody. This is Brian Williams. I'm here for this is our Northshire Consulting Participant Education Series. So this is um, for retirement plan participants. We try to bring different topics to the table. Some are surrounded, um, you know, some are based on the 401k. They could be, you know, something simple. What is a mutual fund? What is a stock? Could be something a little bit more advanced. And then from time to time, we'll bring in some guests to talk about other financial wellness topics. So this is a question I get a lot, especially for um, you know first time home buyers. They're not really sure what the process is. What's it like you know, to prepare for um, you know, getting a mortgage? Even if you say, I want to buy a house in a year, what should I be doing now? Um, and just kind of what the process is like and how long it takes to go through. Um, this, like so many other industries, has been uh, changed and disrupted by technology, which is a good thing, I think, in this area because there's been so much push to get things automated and, and streamlined, but yet there's still folks out there, there's still loan officers who can help you work through the process kind of one-on-one. -on -one. So I have one of those folks with me today. His name is Benjamin Garner, and he's he's here from uh, Guaranteed Rate Mortgage. He'll tell you a little bit more about um, what they do and, and some of their capabilities, but we're really gonna focus on right now where, where the market's at. We're gonna field some questions that we got in advance, so we'll talk about that and give some guidance to you know, first time home buyers or also for some folks who haven't maybe had a mortgage in a long time, maybe they've been in their house for a while. Um, you know, we're gonna talk about some condo stuff. We maybe even get into some uh, you know, information about the rates and where they are and the different type of programs. So um, we do have a slide deck, so we'll, we'll pop that on. This is uh, going out to a few different formats. So normally this is, these type of programs are specifically for individuals who are participants or employees in one of the retirement plans that I manage, or if they're individual accounts as well. Um, but for this one, because it's such a, a hot topic right now, and because we do have a good guest, we're going to push this out to YouTube. So it's streaming there live and to our Facebook group, which is the 401k and beyond group. So in both spots, it will be recorded. So you can go back and, and watch it later on if you choose to do that. Um, and then certainly if you're watching it at a later date and you want to reach out to us with any questions, um, we'll make our contact information available in the in the video description on those platforms. So good evening, Ben. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Brian. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. That almost looks like a virtual background, but knowing the building <laughs> that you're in, I, I know that it isn't. So yeah, no, this, is, uh, this is all real. This is uh, <laughs> this is my office and this is where you can uh, can find me for uh, a majority of the week. Um, but uh, but I do like to get out in the field and uh, kind of meet with uh, with real estate agents and uh, other referral partners as well, too. So I don't I don't just stay in the office all day. But uh, but yes, this is my home base. Um, yeah, so. looks great. That's an old uh, old factory building that you're in that's repurposed for some office space and a yes. brewery. <laughs> yes, actually, conveniently right next door to Kinsman Brewery. So if uh, you know if anybody ever wants to come down to my office, we could always come down and meet for a pizza and beer and uh, and have a good old time and have a nice chat. <laughs> All right. Um, so so we have some slides, you know, mostly working through first time home buyer stuff. But um, before we get too into that, I was just kind of curious the last the last twelve months. So what? What was sort of that initial, you know, is is the COVID stuff rolled out? What was that? How did change things change for you immediately? And then a year later, how are things different? Maybe permanently different? Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. So uh, so the way that COVID kind of hit was uh, typically in the New England area here. Um, our spring season is the hot buyers season for purchases, and uh, kind of with COVID hitting right at like you know March first was the the start of our lockdown. It kind of delayed the whole entire purchase market, and it kind of just kind of pushed it out for the the remainder of the year, where we uh, kind of saw nothing really happening in the beginning of the springtime season. But as like it went on into summer and fall and winter, it was kind of steady. And uh, with the historically low interest rates that we've been having, it opened up a variety of new buyers to the market that um, for the first time, they're now able to purchase a property. And on top of that, we've had a, a new wave of millennials who are now first time home buyers. So it's uh, it's made the market kind of extremely competitive. And um, so I'm here today to kind of talk about the, the, the market conditions and how to navigate through them and how to make your offer the most competitive offer that it could be. So. All right, let's get right into it. So if you happen to be watching watching this live and you want to type in a, a comment or a question in your and the platform, we'll try to field those as they come up. If it's something that comes up that I think we'll address in a later slide, I might I might skip over it. But, uh, you know, feel free to type something in if you have some questions. So 
Uh, all right, Ben, let's get at it. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself and my company. So here at Guaranteed Rate, we are the pioneers of the digital mortgage and we uh, care about our customers a lot. So we have what's called an NPS score or a national promoter score, which um, we kind of base a lot of our transaction off of, of, you know, how well the customer was satisfied and whether or not they would recommend us to somebody else or not. So we have a 96% customer satisfaction off the NPS score. We're the top three uh, retail mortgage lenders in the U.S. You know, we are the third largest and steadily growing. Just actually a year ago, we were number six. Um, so now we climbed up the, to number three. So we are steadily growing and still building as uh, as COVID is kind of trickling away from us and we're getting back to a little bit of normality. But um, so here at Guaranteed Rate, we uh, we like to utilize technology as much as we can. And uh, our founder, Victor Caradelli, he has designed Guaranteed Rate to have as much technology as possible to make the whole entire mortgage experience streamline and user friendly from start to finish so uh here at guaranteed rate we give you the lowest rates the lowest rate possible and the greatest mortgage product that could fit your needs because every individual is different every situation is different so not um you know no two mortgages are alike no two individuals are alike so we um, really kind of have to sit down with the client and kind of go over what their strategy is what their game plan is what their goals are and just kind of get a feel for uh for where they're at and um, try to pick out the best navigation route as far as you know purchasing a home and and how to get them into it. Um, so here we use a lot of technology. Like I said, we have a um, a, a pretty cool uh, process from start to finish, and um, you know we'll we'll get into a few little details of of how we get about things. But we provide unmatched service and great expert advice to help our clients find the perfect mortgage for them. So. The next slide here is just telling you a little bit about our customer complaints. So we actually rank one of the lowest with customer complaints. Like I said, customer satisfaction is a huge thing for us here at Guaranteed Rate. And uh, just to give you a quick little background too, um, what's different between a private mortgage lender and somebody who works for a bank and does mortgages is uh, is a license. So people who work for banks can operate what's under called a, a temporary authority where they don't have to do continual education such as myself they don't even have to get a license to obtain it um so you know you could go to a bank and uh try to get a mortgage and the guy who's actually helping you out may have uh very little experience and very little knowledge as far as what to do and what to uh to look for so um it's you know it's a cool thing to uh to just kind of put out there to say that hey i'm a private mortgage lender i have to do eight hours at least of continual education per state that i have a license in um, and it kind of reflects over in, in, in how we uh, we get customer complaints. So we are ranking the, the you know the highest in customer satisfaction, the lowest in customer complaints, and we like to keep it that way too. And uh, to just tell you a little bit about uh, you know, our guaranteed rate foundation here, we have a nonprofit foundation, and um, this is actually you know this really kind of does touch my heart a little bit because I've actually um, contributed to this myself. I've donated to the foundation, and on top of that too, I've actually recommended for one of my friends to be a part of this foundation where um, she is actually in need of a kidney transplant. And uh, hopefully within the next few weeks, we should have an answer as far as um, if they're going to be able to help her or not and uh, actually obtain you know uh, some kidney transplants for her because she's kind of short about twenty thousand dollars to uh, to get a transplant. So you know it's a uh, it's a big deal to uh, help the communities that we're involved in. You know we don't just like to take your money and run with it. We also like to give back, and this is one of the ways that we give back. But to yeah. uh, get into things here, we have. Um, the next slide, which is our, our intuitive online tools. So like I said before, we are very heavily focused on technology and how to utilize technology to help streamline the process from start to finish. Um, so the first thing we have is what is our called our G GR Affordable app, where we also have a digital online app. If you have a smartphone, you can go to the app store, type in GR Loans, and you should find a, uh, an app. and. Um, it's an awesome tool to use out there in the field, especially if you're a first time home buyer. It kind of breaks down um, what you would be able to afford as far as a monthly payment would go. You know, it, it asks you some basic questions as far as like purchase price, how much you have for a down payment, what your credit score is, if you're a veteran or not. And um, yeah, it kind of just, you know, breaks things down into a, uh, a nice different um, platform where it shows you different loan options, the amount of the loan that you can get, and the monthly payment and interest rate about what it would be. So, you know, it's uh, like I said, no, no two products are the same. No two situations are the same. So it, it's really kind of, you know, my job to sit down with a client and figure out what, um, you know, what their needs are and how we can meet them and if not exceed them. 
All right. You mentioned uh, talking about the the interest rates and trying to get the the best available. How much does that really fluctu fluctuate? You know, we talk about timing the market as far as like stock markets and things like that. But does that really come into play when you're when you're buying a home? Do people sometimes wait a few months to hope the rates are lower? Is that something you advise? Absolutely. So a lot of people try to to, to play it, um, you know, as far as timing goes with the market. But with uh, with the historic low interest rates that we've had, it's it's still the best time to hop in, um, regardless of uh, of you know what you're uh, you're currently locked in for. If you currently have a mortgage, um, it's still a historic low. If you look over the uh, the, the ten year uh, treasury note or the ten year treasury yield over the last thirty years. Um, it's gone down significantly low. So it, it is uh, extremely historic low times to have uh, interest rates being um, near zero, so to say, where actually in Canada, they have a uh, a, a near zero low of, mm -hmm. uh, of like less than 1% for an interest rate. So it's absolutely insane to think about. Um, but yeah, interest rates, sometimes people do like to, to hold off for a little bit. And um, it's not really the best idea to hold off if you're on the market to get to, to purchase a home you better do it now um, because mm -hmm. the way that interest rates go, they could change day by day, hour by hour sometimes. And um, you never really know what's around the next corner. We could all speculate and what we think it's going to do. Um, you know, a lot of like real estate agents and a lot of loan officers, myself, um, we think that the market's kind of going to stay a little bit steady for the next couple of years as uh, we kind of get into this new age of how COVID affected this. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy to see how uh, the big inner cities like New York city are, are, are kind of dwindling away a little bit and people are moving out into the suburbs and it's driving the home prices up and it's just creating such a, a heavy competition where this is kind of the way that it's been for the last year, a uh, year plus, and it's, it's kind of expected to stay this way. So, you know, if you're on the market, it, I wouldn't advise on waiting any longer to, uh, to hold off because we're at a historic low and you, you might as well take advantage of the historic low interest rates while you can, because you never know those, those could jump up tomorrow. They could jump up next week, you know? So it's, uh, it's all speculation on what we think is going to happen, but you know, nobody can really predict the, uh, predict the future. So. Right. And is there much advantage to really shopping around uh, rate shopping or does it, does it change so much and everybody pretty much has access to the same rates? Pretty much. So um, so at the end of the day, it all kind of depends on what our corporate objective is, which is basically our pricing goal and, and how we uh, structure the loan itself. Um, so so you could find, you know, a better rate somewhere else. But at the end of the day, uh, that rate could change. Um, if you get a quote, it's it's pretty much just a quote. It's not an estimate unless you lock it in and you're, you know, expected to continue forward with that. Um, because a lot of the times people do rate shop. Um, but when they get that initial quote from their first lender and they go to another lender, um, and then they you know, they realize, oh, this guy had the, the better option here. Um, the rates could have changed cause they didn't lock it in. So, you know, they got originally quoted maybe uh, let's say a, a 3% and then magically a day or two later, it jumped up to a three and a quarter. So mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, it's a tough ball game to play, but, um, yeah, you definitely do want to shop around, I would say, and just kind of get uh, an idea of what to expect. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it's not necessarily going to get you a better rate. So, mm -hmm. and maybe do that a little bit before you actually go through the application process, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to contact a lender and just ask them a few questions, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to answer them if you guys want to email me or contact me. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, if you want to just sit down and take the time to, to lay out a game plan and ask a few questions, it's the, the, the greatest way to start. I mean, I take a lot of applications that typically people aren't necessarily ready to buy a house right away, but at least they're getting an idea of what they need to get in place in order to obtain a house, you know? So if they need a little bit of employment history or need a little bit more reserves in the bank and just to save up a little bit more money, it, it's just, you know, it's unique to everyone's situation and what they're, uh, what they're looking for. All right. Sounds good. So on to the next slide here, like I said before, we are the pioneers of the world's first digital mortgage. So with our digital mortgage process, we can get you pre-approved in about 30 minutes or less. The whole entire application can take no longer than just like 20 minutes, 10 minutes if you're pretty tech savvy and quick with your thumbs. Um, and you can do the whole entire application from start to finish on your smartphone. So if you got an iPhone, you got an Android, it'll take you no longer than 10, 15, 20 minutes tops. And uh, you can have a pre-approval letter in about a half an hour, 20 minutes from start to finish after filling out an application. Um, That's pretty so, good. Yeah, And you, yeah, can, you can connect some outside accounts and stuff, right? So that you don't have to provide all that documentation. 
Exactly that. So <clears throat> the cool thing that we have over here is we have a, a system called account check. And as you're going through the application process, it asks you to log into your banking information where we could sync your online banking accounts to our digital mortgage app. So you don't have to provide the bank statements. Um, no matter where you go for any lender, they're always going to ask for at least 30 days of pay stubs, bank mm -hmm. statements for the most recent 30 days. And uh, typically it's two years of tax returns. Um, and with account check, we're able to kind of cut down on the documentation that you guys actually have to provide while we kind of mine your data, so to say, from the uh, from the digital app. So it's a really cool piece of technology that is uh, very um, tech savvy. It's very important in today's market as far as the competition goes, because if, you know, you need a pre-approval letter right now, um, this is the way to do it. If you if you go with the old school lender, good luck. They're probably going to take you at least a couple of days or if not a week to get back to you. <laughs> All right. That's good. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and obviously it links up with all the, the credit reporting history and all that sort of stuff. So the more ability you have to link stuff, the less data you have to, suppose, to, to supply. And remember back in the day, that was uh, always a big issue for you guys. You always had to chase down statements and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of this eliminates that. Absolutely. I, I, I can only imagine how difficult it must have been to, to <laughs> do things by like carbon copy paper back in the day and actually have to go through each and every individual page by hand and sign off on things. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's absolutely insane to think about how the market has changed and how technology has really kind of uh, played such a deep role in our lives. And, and, you know, now it's, it's making its way into the mortgage industry, which is very a, a old school, very archaic industry, no matter kind of where you go. Um, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same products, but at the end of the day, at least we have a competitive edge with our technology. Um, so right yeah and the bit and one of the bigger changes is just the different types of mortgage you know going from from fixed rate to adjustable rate and all that kind of stuff so i'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that but that's a huge change too along with the technology it's just the different types that are available absolutely <clears throat> absolutely so uh moving right along here we have uh 24 hour status communication where this is nice for everybody that's involved um so not only the clients as they apply they get status updates of, of what's going on whether their you know their application has started whether it's complete um if it's in underwriting if you're you know your underwriting has conditions and they got approved and then um on top of that if you're working with a real estate agent um they they get the same exact messages as well too so the real estate agent doesn't have to call me up and say hey you know where's john smith's pre-approval what's the the status of it um so it's uh it's very nice to have this little bit of technology that communicates with everybody involved um because in the in, in the mortgage industry and in the mortgage process there are a lot of hands involved between you know the the mortgage lender myself the real estate agent who's on the buyer's side the real estate agent who's on the seller's side the uh, attorneys. So there's, you know, there's a lot of different people that are involved with the process. So this kind of helps it uh, stay in track and stay, you know, uh, transparent between the whole entire process from finish to end. Right. And communication is, is the key there. Any sort of delay or any sort of documents can, can push you to the bottom of the pile. So you really want to stay in tune to this stuff and, and have your documents ready as much as possible before, before going through the process. Right. So you don't have to chase this stuff down afterwards. Absolutely. And that's why it's it's such a good thing too to even contact a lender, maybe even before you're initially ready, just so you kind of mm -hmm. get an idea of what to expect and you know what documentations are involved. Um, and uh, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of a game plan of, of what to expect when you do get ready. So that way, you know, you uh you can have the most competitive offer, which is kind of real key in order to to getting a home in today's market. Because uh, you know, when a home comes on on the market, uh, typically within a, a day or two, they have multiple offers, probably in the double digits. And uh, you know, it, it's up to uh, the real estate agent and myself as a lender to make your offer as much competitive or as most competitive as possible to stand out in today's market. So uh, you have a better shot of getting accepted. All right. Cool, cool. So loans that fit your life. So this is a big one. So like I said before, not, um, you know, no two individuals are the same. No two loan products are really the same. And uh, everybody's got a different fit. So uh, to get into the first one, the most popular one is fixed rate mortgages. They're safe, secure, and predictable. You understand exactly what the down payment is going to be. You understand what the monthly payment is going to be, what your interest rate is going to be, because that's where the term fixed rate comes into is, is the interest rate, where that rate is the same throughout the whole entire life of the loan. Now, uh, for fixed rates, they're, they're available for anywhere from 15 to 30 years. And uh, it's a sound long-term investment where, you know, it kind of 
uh, uh, safeguards you against the market volatility where, you know, interest rates, like I said before, could, could change day to day or hour to hour, depending on how volatile the market is. Um, so it really kind of uh, eliminates that, uh, that surprise, so to say, where, you know, if you had a, uh, an adjustable rate mortgage and, um, we'll get into that in the next slide. Um, it, it, you know, they they sound exactly like that. They are adjustable. So they have a, a certain period where they are, are locked into, but after that they have an adjustment period where they continuously adjust and, uh, and surprise, they just adjust up. They don't really adjust down. So, right. yeah, and on the fixed rate mortgage, I know I've had this this question before from from clients. Is a few years in, you know, maybe their taxes go up or their homeowners insurance goes up, so their so their overall payment and the amount that goes into escrow might have to go up. And they always say, "Well, wait a minute, I thought this was a I thought this is a fixed rate mortgage. How how's it going up a little bit?" But but if you're paying your taxes and your homeowners insurance and and that sort of stuff through the payment, then your payment could go up a little bit. But as far as principal and interest, that's going to stay the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, you could, uh, could get a good understanding of, uh, of what you're going to expect because yeah, taxes do rise, especially here in Connecticut. Um, no matter what town you're in, I, uh, I've had, uh, rarely ever heard of a town actually dropping their mill rate. Um, <laughs> but you know, power to them if they do, because that would be amazing. But, uh, but yeah, so the, uh, initial mortgage payment itself does have a lot of, uh, different factors involved with it, where it has the principal and the interest where the principal is the amount that pays down on what's owed. And then the interest rate is, um, sorry. Yeah. And the interest rate actually, uh, plays down an effect too, where, um, you could go in and, uh, and get a, a feel of, uh, of what the interest rate's going to be. So once you're locked into it, you're locked into it for life with the fixed rate. You don't have to worry about it adjusting at all. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so it's pretty nice. And I do apologize if there's a little background noise here, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, moving along here. So, Adjustable rate mortgages. So now this is a popular product as interest rates start to rise back again. Um, the difference between a 30 year fixed rate and an adjustable rate mortgage can change. Um, so with arms, uh, they uh, might be a popular product for people who aren't really staying in their home for a long period of time where they could um, get into an adjustable rate mortgage. And uh, the, the lock period is uh, is different where you could have a five, seven, or 10 year term where the mortgage is actually locked into it. And then um, it'll have an adjustment period. So typically on, a, on an adjustable rate mortgage, you'll see two numbers on it. It'll be like a uh, five and one or a seven and one or a seven and two. And the first number always means that it's the period for which the rate is locked into. And then the second number is how often it adjusts after that fact. So if you do plan on staying in the home for maybe like, you know, a temporary time, for anything under 10 years an adjustable rate mortgage might be a popular product for you and a good fit for you. Um, you know, it, it, it might be a good, uh, fit for someone who may be in the military, um, who's, you know, maybe have orders to move somewhere else and, and, you know, change uh, locations. So, you know, it's up to me to kind of pick apart what the client's goals are, what their, uh, their lifestyle is like, and you know, what they do for work typically, because, uh, if they do plan on moving, um, you know, the interest rates compared to a 30 year fixed rate compared to a, uh, you know, a five and one arm, uh, the five and one arm might have a, a lower interest rate. So you could actually kind of save a little bit of money over the five years that you plan on uh, staying in the home. And if you know, you're going to sell it in six, then good. You could, you could sell it and get out of the uh, adjustable rate before it even adjusts. And then moving right along here to the other loan options. So uh, other loan options, we have jumbo loans. Um, jumbo loans, they are uh, exactly what they sound like. They're a jumbo, um, meaning that it's over the conforming loan limit for that county. Now, uh, each county is different because uh, obviously it costs a little bit more to live in uh, New York City or a place like Hawaii than it does uh, like, uh, you know, out in the in the countryside. Um, so if you go over to uh, HUD.org, um, you could find the uh, the county loan limits and the uh, map as far as what um, what areas are high cost areas of living. Um, obviously, the places like New York City, San Francisco, they, those are high cost living areas. And um, conforming loans, those are 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 typical conventional loans where they actually conform to the the investor guidelines and uh, they're able to be purchased on the secondary market. So for uh, for those who don't know, there's two different types, uh, two different styles of the market. Uh, there's the front end market, which I work on, is the origination part, and then the secondary market where investors actually buy pools of uh, of mortgages and uh, they're also the servicers of them. So 
Uh, another cool thing is uh, is renovation loans. If you want to buy a fixer upper, that is something that we uh, we are in the business of doing. Um, we do renovation loans, and it's actually kind of cool where we have a guy who is a renovation specialist. So that is all he does. He all, only solely works on renovation and rehab loans, and he knows them, you know, like the back of his hand. Um, shout out to Michael Galanti down in New Jersey. He is a, a fantastic individual, and um, yeah, he he knows renovation loans in and out, and he could explain them ten times better than I can. Um, government loans, those are your typical FHA, VA, USDA. Now, uh, FHA is, is typically the first time home buyers loan where uh, it has low down payment options. You only need to put three and a half percent down. Um, other conventional loans, uh, it's a minimum of 5% down payment. Um, VA, VA, if you're a veteran, um, and you serve this nation, God bless you. We thank you for that. And, um, we appreciate you so much that we actually, uh, have a program called Zero Down for Heroes, where you don't have to put a single dollar down for a down payment. The only thing you, you have to pay is the closing costs, and you could have a 100% LTV, which is a loan to value on the home, and uh, you don't have to worry about actually forking out any extra money. And uh, even the cool thing is with VAs too, even if you do um, end up putting a deposit down on a house just to kind of make your offer that much more competitive, you get it back at the end of the uh, transaction. So it's uh, it's a really nice fit for uh, for veterans who uh, have served this country. Um, you know, it's it's uh, our way of giving back to them. Now, uh, a USDA loan is uh, typically in rural and underserved areas. It has to be kind of out in the sticks. And uh, not only does the property have to qualify for a USDA loan, um, but the the person themselves, the borrower, actually has to qualify too. So there's income limits. Um, you know, you can't be making um, you know six seven figures a year and uh, get a, a USDA loan. But USDA loans are very similar to uh, VA, where you know there are programs that you don't have to put a penny down for a down payment. So it's a lot of cool uh, cool different options that we have there. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Do, do some of those uh, government loans? Do they take a little bit longer to process than the normal loans, or about the same? Uh, they're, they're about the same time. They have uh, different requirements. So uh, the cool thing with uh, with VA loans, um, VA loans, actually, uh, they don't have a uh, loan limit, actually. So uh, oh, okay. most, yeah, so so most um, investors and most lenders, they, they have a, uh, an overlay. Um, and actually, we just bumped ours up uh, a, a few months ago. It was uh, it was one and a half million. And now it's actually jumped up to two and a half million. So we could do a VA loan all the way up to two and a half million um, with zero down. So it's, it's uh, pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty neat. Um, and the adjustable rate or the fixed rate, what seems to be more popular right now? Right now, um, it's more of the fixed rates. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that wasn't really the game plan or the game uh, 10 years ago, you know, back in, uh, you know, the early 2000s, it was more of the adjustable rates that were the popular product. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, nowadays it's typically uh, it's typically the fixed rates where uh, you know the buyers plan on staying in their home for a long period of time, and uh, especially too with just the interest rates the way that they are, they're at a historic low. So mm -hmm. it is a uh, it's a cool uh, a cool feature where you know, like I said, you could stay in that interest rate for the whole entire life of the loan, and you you know exactly what you're going to expect. Right. All right. Cool. And then moving right along. So we got more options, more controls. So uh, this is another explanation of our loan programs here and uh, and what to do with them. So we actually have, you know, many different loan programs where we have the zero down for heroes. If you're a VA and a veteran, um, we also have uh, builders and construction loans, which are pretty cool. So if you want to build from scratch, uh, we actually do financing for that as well, too. Um, and then uh, moving along here, this is a really cool program. It's called Lock and Roll where if you're constantly looking for a home and you kind of understand that the, the interest rates are going to change, um, we could lock in your interest rate on your pre-approval up for an extended period of time for like 55, 85 days. And that way you kind of get locked into the lowest interest rate. And, um, you know, it, it makes your offer a little bit more competitive as well, too, because you're, you're, you're locked into an interest rate. You know exactly what you're going to be spending. And um, a lot of the times where uh, people can qualify under one interest rate, if uh, that interest rate goes up and their debt to income ratio changes, they may not qualify with a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. So this is a great tool to utilize that to uh, to, to lock you in and uh, help save you money over the life of the loan. And, and what scenario would somebody not want to lock in or, or opt for a 55 instead of 85? 
Um, so typically if they, uh, if they're just shopping around and they're not really too positive uh, about actually obtaining a home, that, that okay. would kind of be the case if they're, you know, if they're not too motivated to, if they're kind of on the fence. So, you know, I have a lot of people who are like, yeah, I might buy, I might rent for another year, you know, so I'm kind of mm -hmm. on the fence, you know, the, the tire kickers, as we say. Um, right. But if, uh, yeah, if, if they know that they are going to put an offer on a home and they're going to go under contract soon, then yeah, we could, we could lock it in for 50, 55 days. And that way it protects you from the interest rates actually rising. Um, mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it, it makes your offer, you know, that much more competitive. Okay. And then on to the next, so we have the five steps to a perfect loan and uh, it just kind of breaks it down of the whole entire process from start to finish. So once you actually go through the digital online application, um, it'll take you over to, um, a couple of just different questions to ask you basic information, ask you, you know, your name, your date of birth, your social security number. And once you enter in your social security number, we'll able to pull your credit, look at your credit history, your credit report and uh, see your credit worthiness. And then also too, you uh, get a, uh, a copy of those scores as well too. Um, and uh, so after you find the, uh, the mortgage and after we put you into a perfect program, um, you know, we're going to request those two months of pay stubs, the two months of asset statements. So if you have a 401k, we're going to like to see those to count them towards reserves. Um, if you have two years of federal tax returns, we're going to take that as well, too. And then the HR contact information. So throughout the whole entire process, we're going to be needing to do what's called a, a VOE or a verification of employment. Um, so don't quit your job. Don't change your job if you're if you're looking to uh, to purchase a home. Um, wait till you at least have closed and, and some time has gone by before you do any drastic changes like that. So those are, you know, some things that that actually does happen. I've, I've seen it happen before where, uh, you know, people go under contract, they uh, they obtain the home, they close. And um, two days later, they quit their job and the whole entire process has to start over again. So mm -hmm. they just kind of lost out on that one. So you don't want to do that. You want to. Um, you want to keep your job and uh, you want to understand that um, your, your income is expected to maintain for, you know, at least a, a couple of months and you want to have at least a two year employment history on the back end. So okay. if you uh, if you just started a, a new job, um, it, it may be tough for you to, to, to get into the home buying market just because of the employment history. Um, but if uh, but yeah, if you've been at the same company for for five, six years, then you, you should be good. All right. And then down here at the bottom, too, it talks a little bit about a pre-approval and a pre-qualification. Now, in today's market, really, uh, a pre-approval is a uh, much better uh, option than a pre-qualification. Pre-qualification has uh, very little documentation. It's, it's what uh, uh, the borrower states as far as their income goes. Um, but uh, pre-approval is where we actually go through the documents and, and sort them all out and uh, get a better idea of what uh, you're actually making a month and uh, what you could actually afford a month on top of that. So um, another cool thing, too, is uh, there's different levels of pre-approvals where the, uh, the first two levels of pre-approvals are, are self-stated income where it just goes off, you, you know, what you say you make a month. And then also it goes off your credit worthiness, your credit history. And then with a level three pre-approval, which we're doing a lot of now, um, it, it's a full manually underwrite before you actually go under contract. So typically um, when um, the, the typical home buying process is you apply, you go under contract, then you go under underwriting, and then you go to closing. Now with this um, level three pre-approval, we actually fully manually underwrite the file before they go under contract. So that way you don't have to worry about going through that process. You already get the grunt work done on the front end. And it, it's another tool to uh, help your, your offer stand out that much because if, you know, if you're in the market for, for purchasing a home and the seller needs somebody to close as fast as possible, well, guess what? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through underwriting. So we already have all the income documents. We already have the, uh, the asset documents. Everything's been verified and underwritten. And uh, we do everything in-house with, with underwriting too. So everything stays in, in, inside a, a guaranteed rate company. We don't, um, we don't outsource any of the work. So it's, uh, it's a nice thing to, uh, to help you get a, into a, uh, you know, a home buying situation where you are most likely going to be under multiple offers and you have to figure out a way to make your offer stand out the best. And it's not always just offering more money. Um, you know, a lot of the times, too, in today's market, there's a such thing called an appraisal gap where, uh, you know, people offer 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars over. But the uh, the the house itself only appraises for, you know, some odd less than that. And there's that gap of the appraisal gap where um, 
it, it's a very sticky situation to get into where um, the lenders, we will only lend out what the lowest appraisal is. Um, so it, it's kind of a, a rough situation to get into where if you want to offer, you know, a certain amount over, it, it may have to come out of your pockets as a, as a buyer. Um, if you're able to negotiate with the seller, that power to you, that's another good option to, to, to try and utilize. But it's a, uh, it's a good thing to work with a real estate agent and a lender who knows exactly what they're doing because you don't want to get into that situation where, you know, you, you got under contract, your offer is accepted, and there's a $50,000 appraisal gap that you have to come up with now. So, you know, it's, a, it's a, uh, something that could, could blindside a borrower and, and, and ultimately kill a deal. Yeah, that that pre-approval process that that level three is that relatively new? Um, yeah, actually it is. So um, typically it, it it just started. I want to say about a year and a half ago that that okay. lender started doing this. And uh, here at Guaranteed Rate, we actually have a, a program. It's called the Red Arrow Approval Express. Um, so we we you know get all your documents up on the front end. Um, and that way we can send it off into underwriting and have a full human underwriter review it. Um, before you actually go under contract to, to help cut down that that uh, that closing time, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you have a uh, um, you know a situation where uh, I, I've gotten co purchase contracts where the mortgage contingency is two weeks away from when I actually obtain the contract, which wow. uh, is is very tough to get a, a full appraisal done and a, a full underwrite done in two weeks. Um, but you know, here in today's market, we're able to do it on the front end. And we just have to wait for the appraisal. So it's a it's a cool tool to to help both borrowers and sellers out in the in the long run because uh, it cuts down on the amount of time and documentation that is uh, actually needed. Yeah. All right. So after you apply for the mortgage, you start shopping around for a home. So once you get that pre-approval letter, that pre-approval letter offers, uh, you know, basically you to get the right to go out and start shopping for a home with a real estate agent. In today's market, um, typically real estate agents will not work with you unless you have already seen a lender first and already have a pre-approval letter in your hand. Um, a couple of years ago, that wasn't necessarily the case, but with today's competitive market that it is, it's, it's one thing that, um, you know, <laughs> It's one thing that has a lot of real estate agents referring people back to me where, you know, they got a lot of people who are going on uh, Realtor and Zillow.com and just looking for a home and uh, they're they're contacting the, listed, the listing agents directly. And the first, you know, question the listing agent is going to ask you is, OK, do you have a pre-approval? And, you know, nine times out of 10, they don't. And then they get sent back to me. Um, and then the pre-approval letter is the is the starting point where, um, you know, everything kind of gets uh, determined of what you could uh, afford. So. The uh, the pre-approval is a um, is a basic letter that says you know I John Smith am approved for this amount at uh, you know this this time and uh, pre-approval letters are only good for 90 days um, so mm -hmm. it, it is something that we do have to issue multiple times and credit reports too are only only valid for 120 days so you know a lot of the times we we may have to pull credit more than once um, before somebody actually goes under contract and, and gets their offer accepted. Um, but you know, it's, it's my job and, uh, my diligence to kind of navigate through all that and, uh, and, you know, get the, uh, the expectation off to the, uh, to the borrower. And do they have to typically come back to you if they're, if they're making another offer on the house, if they get into sort of a bidding, a bidding war with somebody, how do, how do they come back to you and, and to what difference, uh, you know, percentage of the home increase or something like that? Yeah, so I've actually had a lot of clients um, uh, be pre-approved for more than what they want on the pre-approval letter because they don't mm. want that listing agent to kind of milk that out of them. You know, so <laughs> right. they, they they want them to say, you know, if the if the home is uh, is listed for three ten, they're like, just give me a pre-approval for for three, you know, fifty at the max. I don't want them to know that I'm pre-approved for four hundred and end up, you know, going way over their uh, their listing price. So it is. Uh, it is a little bit of a uh, benefit to work with a lender, and a, a lot of the times too, um, when uh, when people get a pre-approved uh, pre-approval letter, um, they could have different uh, loan programs. Um, I was doing a a, a pre-approval for a gentleman who wanted a pre-approval for a VA loan and a conventional mm -hmm. loan at the same time too to help his offer stand out even more. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So moving along here. So after are you are you finding now that most people come in, um, you know, sort of a little bit more prepared than they were maybe even a couple of years ago about the process and they're a little bit more educated because they've they've watched videos like this or they've done their research? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so uh, what I'm finding is a, a lot of people who are actually, um, you know, more savvy with the process now where they've done their research, they've gone out, you know, and, and researched, uh, you know, what interest rates are, what the process is from start to finish. They've gone and inquired about videos like this. So yeah, it, it, it does help uh, out a lot because uh, with technology and, uh, and the way that things have changed uh, back in the day, you know, uh, people didn't necessarily know what to do or what to expect. And, and, you know, with all the resources that we have available now, people are educating themselves on, on what to get into and what to expect and uh, try to understand the, the do's and don'ts of the mortgage process. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, after you uh, start shopping for a home and uh, you put a uh, an offer on a home, then uh, you, you you go under what's called under contract. So once you've executed the contract, your loan file is going to be prepared and sent to underwriting. Now that's typically if you did not go through underwriting, um, if you didn't have that level three pre approval. Um, so once you get the uh, the contract, we're going to update the income status or the income documents and asset documents. If you know more than thirty days has transpired in, be in between that time, um, and and earnest money is uh, is your deposit. So that's what kind of secures you from from purchasing that house. And uh, a lot of the times too, people think that um, earnest money is different from uh, a down payment. It's a part of the down payment as well too. Um, and it, it does come out of your cash to close at the end of the transaction. So it is a, uh, it's a nice part of the process where, you know, once you get that contract in your hand, it's a great feeling, you know, you, you, the light at the end of the tunnel is finally there. And, uh, and then you could kind of get prepared for, uh, for closing. So after you come out from, uh, from underwriting, um, underwriters usually typically come back with, uh, onto the next slide here is conditions. So anybody can have a uh, condition where, you know, let's say they have a, a car loan and uh, in order for them to obtain this mortgage, they're going to need to pay off that car loan first or a certain amount of that car loan down. Um, typically even it could be a, a credit card uh, if they have a, a student loan balance where, you know, sometimes underwriting is, is going to come back and say, all right, we're going to need you to um, pay off this credit card give us an updated statement of, uh, of this bank account and then, uh, and then we'll be good to go from there. So it's, it's nice to, to get through this process on the level three pre-approvals on the front end and not have to deal with it when you're under contract and, and you know, everybody's kind of antsy to, to, to get the deal done because you have, uh, you know, me as a lender who only gets paid on commission. You have the real estate agent who only gets paid on commission. And then you have the closing attorney who only gets paid on transactions. So um, unless they actually purchase the home, nobody gets paid and nobody, mm -hmm. you know, nobody wins. So it's nice to have um, that level three pre-approval where you kind of go through the, the grunt work on the front end. And uh, it, it's a, it's a great tool to utilize for not just you as a borrower, but me as a lender and the real estate agent as well too. So. Yeah. I mean, I know everybody wants to get those, get those things done and get those signed to get them done as soon as possible. At what point, um, what in this stage right here, what can sort of make it go off the rails? What are the sort of pitfalls here on step four? A lot, a lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot can make it go off the rails. Yeah. So if, uh, if, you know, certain people try to hide debt that, uh, that was uh, not really disclosed in the first place, then th that could kill a deal. Um, if, uh, people don't really want to pay off uh, a car loan in order to reduce their, their debt to income ratio, that, that could kill a deal. Um, so a lot of things could happen. So it's, uh, it's a, it's a good part to, uh, sit down with your lender and, um, the lender should give you a game plan as far as what to expect and what to do and what not to do. So, like I said before, don't, don't quit your job. Don't, you know, just, just up and leave your company that you've been with. Um, and, uh, and don't go opening up any lines of credit. I cannot emphasize this enough. A lot of people go out and they purchase a home and they're like, Oh, I need furniture now. I'm going to go to Raymore and Flanagan and I'm going to finance this whole entire bedroom set. Mm -hmm. Please do not do that until you have already closed. And it's been at least three to four days after the closing, um, because that mm -hmm. will have to start the whole entire underwriting process over because that's a new trade line of credit that you just opened up at Raymore and Flanagan. So okay. it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's my job as a lender to have that conversation on the front end and give them the expectation of uh, please do not do anything drastic until we get done with this process. And then mm -hmm. you can go out and, and purchase your furniture if you need to. So, yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of different scenarios that could end up killing a deal or even just kind of sandbagging it, you know. So. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then so, yeah, after you get through underwriting, and you get your conditions uh, or your conditional approval. Um, 
we get off to the closing. So this is the best part ever. Um, three words I love to hear are clear to close. Um, every real estate agent is going to love to hear that. And uh, you're going to receive your, your final closing disclosures at least three days before the closing. And the cool thing with guaranteed rate is uh, we have what's called a flash close process. So uh, like I said before, we'd like to try to utilize technology as much as possible. And with our flash close process, it allows you to sign 95% of your documents electronically. So when it comes mm. time to the closing table, anybody who's purchased a house, Brian, I'm sure you could vouch for this. Um, sure. Closings can take typically anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. And you're sitting there signing a phone book full of documents, <laughs> hand signatures where, you know, you're, you're signing until your hands cramped. And uh, mm -hmm. with our flash close process, we do away with 95% of those wet signatures and we allow you to sign them electronically. So it cuts the closing time down dramatically from anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, all the way down to about five to 10 minutes, depending on how good the attorney is. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, it's a very nice tool to utilize. So everybody wins at the end of the day. Um, time is a valuable thing. We don't like to waste time. And uh, we understand that, you know, you don't like to waste it either. So why waste your whole entire day just signing documents until your hands cramp? Yeah, but Ben, you're cutting into those attorneys' billables when you when you rush these things. You move these things <laughs> along. You're right. You are correct there. But <laughs> hey, not uh, not certain attorneys that I work with. So uh, <laughs> to, to shout out my attorney, his name is Dennis Lavrette. He's out of uh, Hartford with uh, OAM Law. And uh, he's been working with my boss for the past 20 years. And he has the flash close process down to a science where, Good. honestly, you're in and out of the closing table before your your butt even warms a chair up. It's fantastic how quick he can do it. And, you know, everybody just kind of smiles at the end of the day and they're like, wow, that was that was easy. That was quick. It's like hitting the staples button, you know? Right. Yeah. It's almost too easy. It's like they missed something or there's got to be more to it, right? I've had a lot of people say that same exact mm -hmm. sentence. So they're like, wait, was that really it? That that's all I had to do. And yeah, that's, that's it. That's how simple it is. So yeah. uh, especially with, especially with refinances too, a lot of people, they, they understand what that process was before. And they're like, oh, I'm dreading coming to this closing table. Like this is going to take the whole entire rest of the day. And they actually get into it and it's, you know, five, 10 minute process. And they're like, wow, that was awesome. So I've heard a, a lot of good things about the flash close process. And I love to, to see people come into the office, do their closing and, and leave with a bag of gifts and you know no less than 10 20 minutes later awesome <laughs> yeah so uh so yeah once you uh get the uh, closing disclosures you'll get those three days before the closing time and then uh we'll do a full review on the uh, costs listed with the closing disclosures that's what your attorney is going to go over if you have an attorney if not we could always recommend one for you um, and then you're going to confirm the closing date with your mortgage team um so we mm -hmm. have uh we have um we have a closing team specifically that does that where uh, it, it's nice where um, other companies, the originator, myself would have to do that from start to finish where here at guaranteed rate, we have people that are specific to that duty where um, we have the originator on the front end, which is myself. And then we have a uh, mortgage consultant, which is uh, on the front end. They, they gather any documentation that may be needed and they kind of prepare you to go through underwriting. And then we have a human underwriter that does a full review of, of every document that you that you have. And then um, after that, we have what's called a, a loan coordinator, where that loan coordinator is on the back end of underwriting. They get all the conditions, make sure that everything's good to go. And then they're the ones that coordinate with the closing department to make sure that everything's scheduled in a timely fashion. And the, uh, the closing works for both you as a borrower and the attorney as well, too. So... It's a it's a nice thing to do with. And then once you go through the closing, uh, the attorney is either going to um, get a uh, certified bank check or schedule a wire. So a, a schedule a wire is just a simple phone call that they have to make. And then, boom, you are done and you are done. But I do have to emphasize this one point. There is what's called a three day right of rescission. So mm. typically when you get done with your closing, it's not said and done until three days after so you actually have a legal right to go all the way through a mortgage process sign your closing disclosures and then you still have 72 hours to pull out of that loan for whatever reason you want to so it's a it's a it's a good thing to know because it's up to me to tell people to you know not open any lines of credit don't quit your job don't do anything drastic or else you're really gonna mess things up and the whole entire process is gonna have to start over again Mm -hmm. so, and is that for the for the borrower or, or can the lender uh, cancel it in 72 hours? 
Uh, that's, no, so that's that's for the borrower. Yep. Okay. So that's their their right. legal right is uh, it's called the three day right of rescission. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, if you know if they're not comfortable with obtaining the mortgage or if they uh, you know found a better deal by by any chance, um, then yeah, it gives them the right to uh, to pull out of the loan. You know, for whatever ever reason is mm -hmm. necessary. Um, but if uh, if you know they do. Uh, something drastic like quit their job or open up a, a you know a, go finance a new car that just you know skyrockets their debt to income ratio and makes them not qualify then then sometimes we as lenders would have to deny them for for doing something like that which is not you know anything fun that we would ever like to do because you know we just put in a lot of work to get all the way through this process and then uh, have the deal fall through for something minuscule like that right all right well that's good stuff i appreciate uh, everything you did here and how can people get in touch with you, Ben? Absolutely. So here's the uh, the next slide over here. So uh, this is my email up on top. It's benjamin.garner at rate.com. Feel free to email me with any questions if you have. And that is my office phone number where you can reach me. Um, if I don't pick up, please leave me a voicemail. I'll get in contact with you as soon as I can. And then if you guys want to apply, go check out the website, rate.com slash my name, Benjamin Garner. And then also, too, on top of that, we have a digital uh, app that if you go to the app store on your iPhone or your Android, type in GR Loans, and then you'll find a uh, you'll find our logo with this red arrow right here. And then um, you can download that app, too. You type in my name, Benjamin Garner, and then it gives you a nice uh, a different options as far as loan pro uh, programs go. And uh, it has a mortgage calculator on there as well, too. So when you're out in the field looking at homes, um, you could kind of get a breakdown of what, you know, a, a $300,000 house would cost you with a 5% uh, down payment. All right. Well, I really appreciate all, appreciate all the good info you gave us tonight. And, um, you know, if you're somebody, like we said at the beginning, if you're somebody who's watching this in the Facebook group or on YouTube, uh, be sure to check in the descriptions. All the contact information will be in there. And, uh, you know, it's a fast changing market. So we'll probably have have been on again as technology changes and the markets change and regulations change and all that good stuff. So uh, thanks very much. I appreciate it, Ben. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful all day. All right. You too.